Hi, it's Kim McGrath from Expressions of the Universe with your full blue moon in Pisces and September forecast, stars and cards for all zodiac signs. And I am officially on vacation, but I pre-recorded this for your, all of you so that you have it in time for the full blue supermoon in Pisces on August 30th. It comes in at 9.35 p.m. Eastern time. The card that I'm choosing for it is from Yasmin Bolin's Moon Manifestation Deck for the Pisces full moon. And it is about forgiveness, to forgive. I just love the graphics on, on this card. And specifically what this card says, this time around, we are welcoming the sign of Pisces. Full moons are for letting things go, getting rid of what no longer serves. Okay, so it's time to forgive. Be careful that you're not coming at life with your mind made up. This card is a reminder that it is all unfolding, Miss, it, that it is an all unfolding mystery and you need to go with events as they unfold. Instead of trying too hard to trick every, tick every box for your dreams to come true, fall into the dreams a little, enjoy the moments. If you're struggling with a manifestation, it could be that what's blocking you is you haven't forgiven yourself or someone else for something that happened in the past. To boost your manifesting powers, forgive yourself and everyone else who needs forgiveness. Manifesting balance is when you strike a balance between all of your duties and what you need to do for inner peace. Getting into a manifesting mindset, hanging on to anger is unhelpful and it can be toxic. Move on and forgive, even if you don't forget. This is your way to a brighter future. A manifesting ritual for forgiveness could include lavender essential oil in your diffuser, uh, finding a comfortable position and closing your eyes. Call in Quan Yin, the wonderful Chinese goddess of compassion and mercy, and ask Quan Yin for her assistance in clearing any upset within you so that you can find forgiveness and move on. Your manifesting affirmation is, I forgive everyone who needs it in my life. It is done. When to manifest your magic? Best time to work your magic is when the moon is in Pisces. Or on a Thursday, which is Jupiter's day, or during Jupiter's hour, which I didn't write down. The full moon in Pisces takes place when the sun is in Virgo and the moon is in Pisces. So I think that's pretty, pretty beautiful, pretty potent. And the crystal that I'm choosing for this lunation period is smoky quartz. You could see just how beautiful this piece is with just all of the magic that's inside it. And the reason why I chose smoky quartz, with the moon in Pisces, the veil is very thin. It rules the 12th house, typically, which is the, the underworld, the other side. So I feel as though we need a little protection, but this also helps to open our third eye, helps us to dream beautifully, connect with the divine, connect with our ancestors, spirit guides, but allows us to have that grounding protection that we need when the veil is thin in those cases, because you don't want anything nasty attaching to yourself, right? So that's why I'm choosing the smoky quartz. Of course, I've got my moonstone bracelet. Um, and then I'm still wearing this gray bracelet 
that Jen Blake had made for me that has the seraphonite and the prenite. I love it. And then uh, hematite. Hematite um, to help block what's coming in to me. Hematite ring. Um, let's do the cards for all zodiac signs first. Then I will get into the astrology. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name of this deck, but I I have used it before. I don't know who it's from um, because all of those details are packed away somewhere. I will pull a card for all zodiac signs. You want to pay attention to your sun sign, rising sign, moon sign, maybe any stelliums, which are clusters of planets in a particular sign. All right, this sounds good. I'm going to start with Aries. Okay, so Aries, you have the guardian. Card number nine, which is one path is ending, a new one is beginning. There's something coming to a completion and a new beginning is starting. Um, this is about taking your time to become aware of and be prepared for all contingencies by making your home base secure so you feel safe and protected. Okay, Aries. So this is calling in your guardian angels. I like that. Or Taurus. It is the alchemist. So that is about manifesting. It is card number 32. This is about your connection with the divine and the emotional connection that you have to make things manifest. If you're not feeling it in your emotions, then it's hard to manifest what it is that you want. So maybe it's that you just really, you see something, you think you want it, but it unless unless it is creating so much joy, then maybe you won't be manifesting it. Um, the three and the two equal five. So this is saying to me that a change needs to be made in order to manifest. And the alchemist always says, you have everything you need already to make whatever it is happen that you want to happen. You just You've got to figure out the right combinations, or maybe it's you've got to figure out the right emotion to connect with. Um, and the card says, our enchanted world provides the means for transforming the laid, the leaden aspects of daily life into the golden experience available to us all. And really, a lot of times it just boils down to being grateful for everything that we have in our lives because then we'll see it differently and we'll perceive things differently. Gemini, you have the ruler and it is card 13. I am a 13 degree Gemini, so I love that. The one is about the self. The three is about the divine connection, ascended masters, guardians. Um, equaling a four, indicating to me about creativity, finding your your tribe, your people, making sure you are with the right people. And it says, sometimes you must create and defend boundaries to protect yourself from the invasive or other inappropriate or the inappropriate behavior of others. So you need to be your own best advocate and put the stop up. Little smoky quartz, little hematite, a little black tourmaline would not hurt. Um, so this could be an infiltration of people in your life that really shouldn't be there. And this is perfect time to be getting rid of them. And you will see when I pull up the chart, how that relates. Cancer. It is card 34 and it is the sage, the wise one. Card 34 talks about divine connections, the right people, creating um, the coming together. 
and that equals a seven. So that is like the supernova of the divine connection. Um, the wisdom that comes from the universe or a higher power. This says, look at your situation with mature experience viewpoint of a wise person. Examine assumptions about the aging process and mastery. Hmm, that's interesting. What do I make of that? Um, well, I will say the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, so the aging process. I read an article recently that talked about how detrimental to our health and how toxic it is when we obsess on the aging process instead of allowing ourselves to embrace it and go with the flow. I am obviously doing that because I'm not looking my best today, but I don't care because I'm on vacation. Um, and I'm loving every minute of it, I have to tell you. All right, Leo. Leo, it is card number one, which that's so Leo. And it is the shaman, another wise one. The one is about the self, how we look at ourselves, how we perceive ourselves, how we project ourselves out into the world. Work on healing and empowering yourself if you want to be useful to others on their own journey from suffering to healing. This is about helping others healing. Oh, but Leos, you have to also heal yourselves first before you can try and heal another. But I will say in that healing process, when we are helping others, it really helps us to heal components of ourselves and grow. I've learned that over, over the decades. Virgo, happy birthday, Virgos, you little virgins. It is your season. Okay, so you have the Maya. And this is ancient wisdom, similar to the sage and the alchem, uh, the sage and the shaman. It is card number eleven. Yes, it is eleven. So when I'm looking at it on the screen, there it looks like a number eight. Maybe I need to get new glasses. Um, so the eleven. Okay, we all know eleven, eleven. That is like super connection to the other side. Uh, the Maya, it's making me think of, you know, our ancestors. Um, this says, allow past mistakes to help you see through all the illusions so you can understand and act upon what you know is real and what is false. Love that. And, you know, for Virgos, don't overthink it. That's one of your downfalls. Um, I know I have a Virgo stellium. And so, you know, my grandfather, who was a Virgo, the epitome of a Virgo, um, used to say to me, Kimberly, over analysis leads to paralysis. And I was four and didn't understand what that meant. But now that I'm older, I do. Um, and yeah, over analysis leads to paralysis. And we just want to keep moving, right? Moving and grooving. All right, Libra, you have card number seven, the seeker. Card number seven is saying what? Um, well, I feel like, well, okay, so the seven is divine connection. It is a divine number. The seeker, to me, feels like what? you are seeking is also seeking you is what I'm hearing. And this says the meaning of life is to seek ways to give your life meaning. Doing so with gratitude, patience, and compassion for both others and yourself. Hmm, I think that's a good Libra thing, especially for the Libras that I know. All right, Scorpio. I feel like it's been so long since I've done any astrology. I have to, I have, I feel like I'm so vacationing that 
everything's out of my mind. I'm like, okay, what's next, Scorpio? All right, Scorpio card number 15, the teacher. The Scorpios, you're often extremely wise, like the owl and the snake in this picture. I think this is perfect for the Scorpios. To me, this is saying time to shed old skin. Use your wisdom that you have already built upon. Um, and you become the teacher instead of the student. Card number 15 to me says it's time to make some changes about yourself that will um, six manifest exactly what it is that you want. Like, stop making the same stupid mistakes. It's time for you to grow up, maybe. Um, this says you would do well to read more and otherwise learn about those who have worked diligently to attain what you are currently seeking and um, have succeeded at so that you too can succeed. So maybe a little student, um, what I feel like is that saying, you know, you don't have to go it alone. There's so many that have gone before you that can show you the way. Don't be arrogant and not take that knowledge and wisdom or advice. Sagittarius, card 24, and it's the healer. So are you going through a period that you need to be healed? Or like I said previously, could you be helping others heal themselves and therefore heal yourself through them? 24 is about your emotional body, your emotional being, uh, the way you create, the way people make you feel. Um, and when that feeling is off, when those emotions are off, then it does hinder your manifestation skill. This says you and possibly someone you care about need to be healed from the effects of past trauma before things can be resolved to your liking. Right? Capricorn, the lover, the lover. Card number 23, emotions again. Um, I feel as though that some changes need to be made. The lover talks about how can you love yourself when you're connecting with something that's higher than you. Listen to those messages. Um, I feel as though that a change, number five, needs to be made within the self to be our own lovers, the lovers of ourselves so that we can then maybe find our soulmates, our lovers, our persons. The lover says, with love, all things are possible for love replaces our confusing doubts and weakening fears with faith in yourself and others. So this is talking about, you know, being kind, being compassionate, Therefore, you can be giving out love versus judgmental negativity. Aquarius. Aquarius, it is card 16, and it is the hopeful, which is the star card in a traditional tarot deck and is the card of Aquarius. I love that. Um, the 16 talks about the self how we are or are not manifesting what it is that we want. And this is saying, this talks about a faith, a devotion of a divine connection, something higher, something bigger than yourself, um, prayers. So you see her praying, looking up to the sky. Um, this is saying like when you make that connection, it will help with your manifestation. The hopeful says the power of prayer and meditation can wake you up, renew your faith, help you attune to your needs and align with your deepest truths. Love that. 
last but not least, Pisces, and it is your full moon, Pisces, so utilize this energy to your benefit. And you have card number five, the Sybil. Card five indicates the need for change. And this is a great time for you to discard whatever it is that doesn't serve you, whether it's thoughts or emotions, people, things, clutter. You need to, it's time for you to get rid of stuff so you can make room for the stuff that you want coming into your life, for the people, for the energy, for the emotions, whatever it is, whether it is body, mind, spirit, material, immaterial, it's time to clear things away. The Sybil says, think twice before sharing what you know with anyone except those who you know without question, are ready to hear it. So sometimes honesty is not always the best policy. Um, yeah, so think about that, Pisces. You don't have to share all of your information with people. Um, and I had a conversation recently with a Pisces about that, and hopefully you're watching. But I think that was a really good sign to say. Sometimes you have to keep things to yourself for your own protection or even to be kind and compassionate to another, depending on what the situation is. All right. I hope you liked your cards. I am going to quick pop into my prepared charts and... Um, my little, my little slides for September. All right, so September highlights, I actually, because I'm recording this so far in advance, I just wanted to remind everybody so you can see, we are in the midst of Mercury retrograde by the time you are seeing this. Mercury retrograde occurred on August 23rd. August 28th, Uranus will retrograde, which is like the higher octave of Mercury. August 27th, Mars will move into Libra. And if you see, it says in detriment, Mars does not like to be in Libra. Libra is its weakest sign because Mars rules Aries, which is on the opposite end of Libra or Libra, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, and so Mars will be a little grumpy. We could all be a little grumpy because of this. But it also, because it's weaker, will tone things down in the collective, which I like. Although the astrology does look kind of ex explosive uh, throughout the month of September. August 30th, that's where we have the full blue supermoon in Pisces. It's seven degrees. 25 minutes coming in at 9 35 35 p.m eastern standard time and yeah oh sorry oh well i have uh my alignment is off september 3rd venus will turn direct it will still be in shadow so you want to watch Love, money, material things, investments, how much you're spending. Um, I know that I said that we shouldn't be spending money during Venus retrograde. And I, I've i been spending money like ridiculous, re just ridiculous. And so, yeah, but I am ruled by Venus too, being a Taurus rising. And I didn't take my own advice. Um what can I say? September 4th, Jupiter will turn retrograde. So the one benefic comes out of retrograde, another goes into retrograde. The retrograde season is really great though. Um, we have Venus in Leo, Saturn in Pisces, Pluto in Capricorn, Aquarius, Chiron in Aries, Neptune in Pisces, all retrograde. And so, you know, in addition to Uranus and Jupiter, the only planet not in retrograde is Mars. 
because Mars went retrograde last August through March of 2023. So an eight month period. We've had enough of that. Uh, let's see, what else? You want to watch overspending still uh, the moon in the moon in Libra, twin Kunxing Venus retrograde. That's September 3rd. Um, what else did I write? Anything good? I will be back with the new moon in Virgo, a new video. So for the mid month with new stars and cards. And I will be back from vacation in time for that. September 15th, Mercury will be direct. Um, however, both Venus and Mercury will not be out of their shadow period until the first week of October. So, you know, things are still a little touch and go. And then September 23rd, the autumnal equinox, spring equinox in the Southern hemisphere, the sun moves into Libra, both occurring at 2.50 a.m. Eastern time. And so you can see not a whole lot really going on. There are underlying other things, but considering that I'm on vacation, um, I just wanted to keep it to the most important things. I will say that Sunday, Sunday, August 27th, when Mars is moving into Libra, before that, the sun will be opposing Saturn. Um, that could feel like our power is being taken away. Maybe somebody's bullying us. Um, you'll see in the next slide when I bring in the full moon or one of the slides down the way, you'll see how that lines up. Um, so we are in Virgo season. Virgo asks us to be kind to our guts. And to follow our gut, Virgo rules the abdomen, intestines, digestive system, which then links to our immune system. We are what we eat. So you, I'm recommending that we eat really healthy at least this month. Don't gorge ourselves. We, you know, the gourmand with Venus going direct, we may want to chow down. But then with Jupiter in Taurus going retrograde, maybe maybe we will eat on the lighter side. So just want some something for you to watch out for. There are a lot of health implications in this month coming up. Um, with the North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra, you know, that's talking about the head, the eyes, the blood, the kidneys, the adrenals, our hormonal system. Hydration is especially important with this month's astrology and for the next, I think, 16 months. This is a great month to get in touch with our bodies from what we put into our bodies to how we move and care for our bodies to how much rest we give our bodies. Staying hydrated helps boost the immune system because it gets things moving, um, the digestive system and the elimination systems. What I will say is um, Virgo is about the body. It is about self-improvement. Um, have these written down that I wanted to talk about service, employment, our daily duties, our daily work that we take care of at our small animals, for sure. Um, it's our health, but it's, it's not only our health of our body, it's our spiritual health, and most importantly, our mental health. I know a lot of us astrologers We'll go right to the sixth house when we're looking at a chart because we can determine how a person's health looks and what their mental health is like. When you're looking at a country as a whole, you look at that sixth house that chart 
and it'll tell you what the mental um the mental state of a country is and it's not good for the united states right now i will tell you that um virgo rules the sixth house which just in general it is about health but it's the public's health more specifically the mental and physical um, it's the nation's workers and employees, large labor groups, unions, animals, grocery stores, things of daily living, branches of service like the Army, the Navy, and um, one other. There's uh, The Sixth House also takes care of our political stability in the world, financial solvency of the nations litigations, judicial functioning, communal harmony in the country, health of the public, labor relations, relations with neighbors. And I think that is all I have on that. I could go on and on because um, I will tell you that a lot of the aspects, we have a lot of double earth aspects. Let's see. A lot of planetary action occurring in Taurus and Capricorn and also Virgo. Where are you, Virgo? Oh, ah, 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 right here. It, so it's very drying. And that's why it's important to stay hydrated. I will say with these aspects, look at this chart. Um, I would expect between now and November that we could have uh, some seismic activity. I know that I was talking to an astrologer friend and seismologists are predicting possibly a 9.0 or greater earthquake coming. Um, I don't know, you know, if those seismologists look at astrology, but it is showing in the astrology. Things could be explosive um, between now and the end of the year, but definitely um, weather anomalies, more horrible weather anomalies. So... You know, also, too, with Uranus stationing, with Jupiter stationing, Venus and Mercury, when planets are stationing to go retrograde or to go direct, it intensifies that energy. And Uranus, you know, says expect the unexpected. So, you know, that's stationing August 28th, something you know, really powerful could be happening. Um, you know, this is the full moon chart. So at that time, Uranus is already retrograde, but not, not Jupiter yet. Um, and then, you know, coming in on this full moon, although Saturn does hold back the moon a little bit. So, you know, that watery, like what I'm feeling with these earth planets and then the water moon, mudslides, landslides, but it's, you know, there's more earth here. So we'll have to see. Um, now that everything has moved out of Leo, the fire should start to die down. We don't really have a lot in air other than... Um, nothing is in Gemini. We have the South Node, which, you know, that's in Libra. Mars moving in. Will that intensify it? Maybe once it hits, you know, once they conjunct each other. And then Aquarius, it, Pluto is close enough to Aquarius, but Hygieia is there. And so that's about healing and health and cleanliness. Um, it is retrograde. So we'll just have to see. Now here's the sun at seven degrees, the moon, sun at, in Virgo at seven degrees, the moon in Pisces at seven, conjuncting Saturn. 
there's a power struggle going on here. Um, it's an like I feel like emotional abuse, mental abuse, a bullying situation, you know, and here we have that 11th house. So what I had written here is, you know, this moon is placed in the 11th house, suggesting that friends, acquaintances, when I say friends, these are the people that are closest to you. So, you know, it could be, um, you know, your partners, even though they would typically show up in the fifth or seventh house, depending. Um, but the moon is placed in the 11th house here in this chart, suggesting that friends and acquaintances are a major feature of our lives at the moment. This is what we should be looking at, the people that influence us, both positively and negatively. On one hand, our friends can be unreliable, changeable, failing to live up to our ideals. These are the things that we need to look at. Um, the ideals, failing to live up to our true ideals of what a true friendship is. It may be that our friends change within themselves and move on emotionally or simply that they move you know, out of town and we lose contact with them. Either way, you know, and when people's lives change, the dynamics change. And sometimes, you know, we just can't stay in touch with the people that we used to stay in touch with all, all of the time, because there are other things happening in our lives that have to take precedence, maybe are a little more important. Either way, we suffer because we may feel a sense of loss when separated from our friends. We seek a sense of security from our relationships with other people, only feeling safe when surrounded by warm and loving friends. On a more positive note, we can benefit from our large circle of acquaintances who help us emotionally, maybe financially, and help us to achieve our own hopes and wishes. The hopes and wishes are the 11th house. And then the moon in Pisces, we could feel uh, our emotions very deeply. We may seek reclusion when under stress or, you know, feeling emotional. So there could be a tendency for us to, you know, be a hermit for a little bit. And that's okay. We have strong empathy with our mother, maternal figures, our feminine side, the feminine side of our friends. So it's that softer, gentler compassion. That's kind of the energy that we should exude and seek out. However, we need to learn our own emotional boundaries with our friends and acquaintances. So these are the things that we're working on. And then of course I have stars and cards at the end, but I already did them for you at the beginning of the video. So I hope you liked this little video that I prepared for you to be released when I am on vacation. Um, I'll be back before you know it. I have pre-scheduled posts to post on obviously YouTube, but Facebook, Instagram um, for the entire time that I am away so that you are all, you know, I think about you. I care about you. Um, but I'm just, you know, I'm not going on social media. Um, I don't know if I announced it or not. Um, I did to some of my friends, but since the last time I was here, unless I did it on the last video, which I can't remember, but, um, we discovered that, you know, I announced that my daughter's expecting my first grandchild and we found out she will be a little girl. So, so exciting, so exciting. And um, yeah, and I'm just loving up my family right now as you're watching this, soaking up some sun, the beach, the food, the entertainment, the music, that's what I'm doing. And, but, you know, I always still think of all of you and I hope you're all doing well and I'll be back 
before the new moon in Virgo on September 14th. So stay tuned. Oh, check out the companion blog for this. I'll post the link down below. And I'll see you soon. Bye.